One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I, I hope you enjoyed that first intro that we were talking about today. And the fact is that we really do need to, I'm seriously, this is, when, when I'm talking and I even talked about the, the past history of, of, of church, of Christianity, um, it's, it's important for you to understand that what I'm talking about is eternal life. Now, those that don't believe in eternal life, I got you. No problem with that. That's, that's, that's not important to us who by faith believe in eternal life. And, and the point I'm trying to say is those who believe in Christ and, and believe in eternal life, meaning heaven, and also the fact of hell, need to understand that there's the history of Christianity that indicates that the steal, kill, and destroy was granted <laughs> to uh, to ministries or to the people of, of that want to be Christians to do the steal and kill and destroy, which is hate, torture, murder, rape. I mean, everything that the Ten Commandments tell them not to do, they were given permission by ministries. You'll see, and we talked about it before, even the Catholic Church, when, when the, the, uh, the Pope Nicholas V said, hey, these people are not covered by the grace of God. Go ahead and do everything you want to them. Because because they're not covered by the grace of God. The only problem with that is that you telling somebody, a believer, a human being, a creation of God, that it was okay to rape, murder, kill, enslave, and everything else to another human being, where God clearly told you, at least told you in the Hebrews, because they're supposed to be the chosen people. And the fact is that it's really for all mankind in the end, especially this Christianity, Christ teaching. You told them, based on the fact that that person is supposed to represent the body of Christ, to do the things, the works of the flesh, that is contrary to the teaching, the doctrine of Christ, contrary to the Ten Commandments of God, and People have all the way up to the 19th century, the 20th century, and the two places in the 21st century of still hating, still wants to kill somebody, still can't stand somebody because of the mere color of their skin, protecting a stupid status that they believe is important to them, but they don't understand that if you think that the status of saying, I am better than these people because of my complexion, and therefore, I'm going to do the things of the flesh, not understanding that that equals eternal death. It doesn't matter what you think. It doesn't matter how you feel. It doesn't matter if you think that the, the value of your, 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 your status, if you're talking about you know, like black superiority or white superiority, and you believe that that's important, that, that means that you mean your life, your eternal life is not important. And that you have chosen eternal death. And let me like say something about eternity. See, we live in this world, <laughs> and, and that span of life that we have here compared to eternity doesn't compare. You're talking about a minute of a second within eternity. Let me understand. Let's say eternity. Is, is a thousand years plus, but let's start with a thousand years. And you only live to most people, uh, maybe a hundred. And you know, that's that the average lifespan is 70, 78, 75. So let's say less than a hundred. So you rather do the things of steal, kill, and destroy, knowing that 
the almost a thousand years of eternity will go beyond that smidget of time. And that you choose eternal death, meaning could disconnect from God for a status? Think about it. I'm, I'm, I, they, they have put a wool over your eyes. You know, the Bible said that the, the God of the world blinded the minds to, to actually accept eternal death or eternal disconnect from God for a status, and I'm talking about especially people that are poor, for a status by people that are supposed to be more financially advanced above you, you know what I mean? They got they're in the millions or the billions. <clears throat> and they gave you a status that doesn't put food on your table, doesn't put money in your pocket, doesn't give you a new house. <laughs> doesn't doesn't give you property. In most cases, you eat, you 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 you're barely making it. But you said, well, at least I'm better than other some other people because of the color of their skin. And you and seriously, did that that acceptance of man values more? Than the acceptance of God, your creator. And then in this case, we talked about your redeemer, Christ Jesus, Christ Yeshua, Christ, saying that that what they giving me is more valuable than what God gives me or has given me. In that case, you know, in the case of eternal life, you know, it's, it's, it's no different from Eve, Adam and Eve in the garden with the devil is tell, gave them an offer of something that will make them have this knowledge of good and evil to be like God and forsaking all the things that God gave them in the garden, the protection, the comfort, the food, the feeding, everything, everything that man needed in that garden was provided by God. And man, because he violated the commandment of God, listen to what I'm saying, people, I hope you're coming to talk about your eternal life. Because they went against the value, the commandment of God, they were kicked out of the garden. And I'm telling you, said that it went something, and the devil gave you something, the devil offered them something that God already given them as far as the, the, the comfort, the, the glory, and everything else, the anointing, the connection to God. And I think if, I'm pretty sure in due time, in due season, all the understanding of knowledge of good and evil would have been given to man. But no, somebody put this shining object in front of you that you disobey. This is Eve, Adam and Eve. They disobeyed God and went against his commandment and were kicked out of the garden. Some of us who sit there and taking this shining object of saying, you, you, I'm, I'm, you're going to be better than these people because of the color of their skin. You're going to be better than these people because you come from here. They come from somewhere else. You're better than these people because we see you better than these people. We're not going to give you more money. We're not going to put food on your table. We're not going to give you a whole house. Matter of fact, you're going to be dirt poor as you were. Or you're going to be less thin in the economic status. But I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you a social status. Social status doesn't feed you. But economic status gives you the ability to generate wealth. And, 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 and that's the one that makes you know, things happen, right? What you resources that you have allows you to do different things. And on top of that, if you still obey God's commandments, could Christ say, I came to give life and life more abundantly, you have 
eternal, those people, if they they follow the will of God, operate on the will of God. See, they're not trying to, they're not trying to, they they not they're not trying to keep us people's status down. They want you to do that. You see what I'm saying? They want you to do the dirty work. You know, I think Truman once said, said if you want to keep the black man down, you gotta you want to keep him in the gutter, you gotta get be in the gutter with him. Because if you don't, if you don't be in the gutter with them, they're gonna be trying to come out of that gutter. So you have to you have to be as bad and, and terrible as as you got to be evil because those things are evil. They, they, you know you heard about the things about the lynching where you talking about instead of just just lynching a person for hours you tormented that person and the other people because of their perceived social status were participating in demonic evil things, steal, kill, and destroy. You know, John 10, 10 said a thief comes not, comes on to steal, kill, and destroy. And people actually went to these events. These were all advertised, talking about lynching and so forth. And, and people came and watched the torture of a human being as if it was a spectator sport. Not understanding because of the evil, because of the, the transgressions, their eternal life went into jeopardy. And some of you sit there and say, no, I didn't. Well, based, based on what you, what, what scriptures are you saying that gives you the teaching of Christian? If you're gonna be a Christian, that's what we're talking about, right? If you're gonna be a Christian, what scripture that you will find that supports you given the right to steal, kill, and destroy? What scripture gives you the right to torture a human being, man, woman, or child, and say, I'm still doing Christ's will? You find it. You ask your pastor, you ask your mama, you ask your daddy, you ask them, what scripture are you standing on that allows me to operate in hate and murder and torture and discrimination and, 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 and oppression and enslavement of another human being that gives me that right to do that in order to still say that I'm going to heaven. You, you do that. Because I'm telling you something. You're not going to find the scripture. And you you're not going to find the scripture. But you're holding a, a, a perceived status. Matter of fact, you're going out of your way to protect that perceived status. Not understanding that God has given you a status of a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar, a peculiar people call out of darkness into God's marvelous light. A status of a child of God. You give that all up for a human social status. I'm just telling you, please, because it, 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 I'm concerned about your soul. Now, most of you sit there and think, like, oh, well, I, I'm concerned about my social status. But what about your soul? What about your eternal life? I say, focus on eternal life. Don't focus on being with the devil. Don't be, don't let the devil be your father. Let God be your father. Instead of you sitting there doing something that is contrary to the contrary to the will of God. So the status, and I'm sorry I talked so long, uh, but it's, it's more important to try to get the message across that I'm trying not to, to uh focus on your uh, history and try and indoctrinate you to hate. I'm trying to focus on your indoctrination to have eternal life, the doctrine of Christ, the teaching of Christ. And so I put that saying in the summary, who convinced Christians to conform to the stealing, killing, and destroying? Who, who told you to conform to that? And like I said, the scripture I used in John 10, 10, the thief, the devil, comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Christ came to give life and life more abundantly. Look that scripture up. And then look at it, Romans 12, 2. It said, be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
So this is what we're talking about at part. This is part A. I did the introduction. You can call it introduction part A if you want to, but I, I titled it as introduction. No, actually, I titled it part A. So this is part B. And, and I hope you, let's look at these scriptures to see whether you conform into Christ or you conform to the world, which one is beneficial to you. Because that's what it really comes down to. It was beneficial, to, beneficial for your children. That would come down to it. Because that's you, you got a bad history. Many of us that call themselves the body of Christ, you have a bad history. And there's people who have died already who call themselves Christians. But we're not. Because Christ said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So who, who convinced these Christians? to conform to this image of the devil instead of conforming to the image of Christ. That's that's what we're working on. And you know, the, the part A, we we uh we went over the, the importance of knowing the scriptures and 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 this I think we should use this uh as often as possible. This research was done, it was a survey. And I'm not sure how big the audience was, the sample audience that he used, but for Christianity, the people who profess to be Christians, about two billion, over two billion people. But of those two billion people, this survey took a sampling, and this sampling may or may not reflect. And the way you can tell whether it may or may not reflect is you see whether you what answer fits you, what percentage fits you in the question of how much of the Bible have you personally read? How much? And it says right here, 10% of that 2 billion, maybe, of this percentage point, is saying none of it, had never read the Bible. It said 30% only a few sentences in the Bible. Do you fit into the 13%? Do you fit into the 10%? 30%, the largest sampling, says several passages of stories that they had read. And most cases, those stories, and they may not even read and they was told those stories that were probably done during children's uh, school, Sunday school. Meaning, you know, David and Goliath, I guarantee you, most people guarantee you, if you think about it, most people know the story of David and Goliath. Most people know the story of Samson. Most people do. Most people know about the story of Noah and the Ark. To a degree, they know it. They may not have read it, but they heard it. Uh, most may know the story about Jonah and the, and the well. Well, the fish, or whatever, that he that swallowed them up. Most people know about that. Uh, but they may have even known about the Exodus story. Uh, the children of Israel, the Hebrews leaving Africa after being there for about 400 some years, leaving there and going to the promised land, which is just a few miles away. And it was still in Africa, on the continent of Africa. But the fact is, they may know those some of those passages, but a lot of those passages, a lot of the examples they don't know. And then it says 50%, at least half of it, half of the the, the Bible. And I hope they, that half was the New Testament because if you call yourself a Christian, you need to, and well, I'm encouraging you to read the Bible for yourself. 12% are so almost all of it. So it's 12% almost all of it. 11% um, all of it. They read the, of the 2 billion professed Christians, 11% uh, read all of the Bible. And then there's 9% read all of it more than once, uh, 9%. And I, I'm going to probably put out a challenge is for us, let's get this as Christians, the New Testament, that we, 90% of us have read it. Let's push that. Let's I ask you to encourage people to do it as well. Read the New Testament because that gives you the description of what a Christian is supposed to be. And so I encourage you to do that. Uh, but you asked that question for yourself. How much of the Bible have you personally read? And I think that's important for you to understand for yourself. 
Okay, so th that's what we start off with. Uh, the last segment I did after using this chart and going over it as the eye opener, and I hope you look at it, we did go over the Lord's Prayer. And, and the main focus I want to make sure we do we talk about the Lord's Prayer is verse 10, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. His will is his word. If you want to know the will of God instead of listening to people who lie and all those other things, you do read the scriptures for yourself. Read the New Testament for yourself. And, and encourage you to read the Old Testament, but definitely I need you, if you're going to profess to be a Christian, read the New Testament. Please, I'm asking you, as much as God told you to do it as well, read a scripture for yourself, the New Testament. You know, in 2 Timothy uh, 2.15, it says, study to show yourself, yourself approved unto God, which is what you need to do, Right? It's telling you, study to show yourself approved to God. I do also put in the fact, and also say, do it daily. Verse 11 says, give us a day of daily bread. The daily bread is the word of God. Once again, you want to feed your spirit man daily. And I put out before, I say, I recommend if you read, if you incorporate reading the scripture, at least one chapter a day, in conjunction with your prayer, you will end up reading the entire Bible over and over again, if you incorporate that as part of your prayer, pray in the morning and pray in the evening. This is how you read the entire Bible, one chapter a day. That's all people ask you to do. And you can meditate on that one chapter anyway. Instead of trying to, we don't want you just to read it. We want you to start letting it be revealed to you. Amen? Uh, I do want to put that in First Timothy in the slide here, First Timothy 2, 4. Who will have all men, talk about God, who will have all men to be saved. That's why we don't want to focus on some social status that tells you the right to harm, kill, abuse, and all those other things, and to teach your children to do the same, God will is for all men to be saved. So you kill it and torturing somebody or trying to enslave somebody or trying to uh, discriminate against somebody, trying to oppress somebody, you're trying to oppress people that God wants saved. And if you don't think that it's all, that all people, uh, read the back of the book, read Revelation, read chapter 7. It says all people, all nations, all tongues, all families is around the throne of God. So just think about the fact is, are you preparing yourself to be not around the throne of God because all these other people would be around the throne of God? You got, they, you've been, a lot of people have been deceived, totally deceived, thinking that it's more valuable to be better than other people from your own mind, because you're not better. Number of them are better than one another. But you can try to do it in your own mind, say you're better than somebody. And then the fact is, if you're better, you should be one more restraint than the other person. You shouldn't be a, 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 a murderer or a stealer or a killer. You shouldn't be doing that. You should set the example, right? Don't you think so? Who, who set the example of, of, of going to some, uh, in the past, going to some lynching as if a spectator sport and watch a human being be tortured for hours. Then you're going to burn them. Then you're going to lynch them. And you say, what? That's Christ? That's John 3.16 where God so loved the world? That you saying is that, no, no. And you know, I heard some people that even try to argue against that. Oh, he ain't loved the world. He just loved a certain people. You only live one world or whatever you want to call it and don't understand is God loves all of us. He loves you. And even the history that we have, we can repent. The people who did die, they died in their sin, they died in their hate and judgment has been given to them. You can't change that. But you can change you. You can change you. You know, Romans 14, 12 said, so that all men, so that every one of us, talking about every one of us, that's the whole point I'm trying to say. If you were a spectator and came to celebrate the torture and murder of people, I'm talking about your, your, your family history, and they taught you to hate and everything else. But if you went there, and the scriptures clearly said in Romans 12, 14, so we're talking about going forward. So that every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every last one of us. So you don't want to get caught in that situation. Amen? 
You really don't want to get caught in that. So I, I, I advise you to think about that. Amen. And then, so the 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 uh, next slide that we'll cover is the left hand side of the slide is talking about the crusade and 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 the the atrocity that occurred in the crusade where the Catholic Church sent the Templar to invade and take the kingdom of God by force to put it into Christendom. And, and they invaded. That's what the, the Arabs look at this today, call you crusaders. That would have been lying was talking about the crusaders. Invading, they murdered, they raped, they killed. They did all kinds of bad things, and they were defeated. They, they, they did it like three times. They got the they were successful eventually, and then they still couldn't hold it because they it's like <laughs> you can't hold something like that unless you really want all Christians to have went and lived that area, and that's what was going to happen. People weren't going there, right? So they couldn't hold it. They were outnumbered and eventually fell, but they were doing it. Uh, trying to say anything was doing it in the name of God, but. I just want to read this and we we'll close out uh, for part B is Jeremiah 17, 5. And then we'll pick it up in part C a little bit and go over a little bit. But it says, thus says the Lord, cursed be the man that trusts in man and make his flesh his arms and whose heart departs from the Lord. For he shall be like the heath in the desert and shall not see when good cometh, but shall inhabit the parched places in the wilderness and his salt land and not inhabit it. Blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord and whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be as a tree planted by the waters and that spreadeth out her roots by the river and shall not see when he cometh. But her leaves shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. See, verse nine, the heart, we're talking about the heart of man, is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, this is God saying that I, the Lord, searches the heart. Your heart, if your heart is evil, your heart is dark, if your heart has steal, kill, and destroy in it, he searches, he sees that in your heart. He said, I will try the reins and will give every man according to his way and according to the fruits of his doing. God is going to look, that's what I'm saying. The, 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 the people of wealth, the people, people of period, have deceived people to do and conform to steal, kill, and destroy. And God is saying, I'm going to, you're going to give account for that. And he's going to look in your heart. You can sit there and I don't care if you think that your righteousness is based on the color of your skin, or your righteousness is based on you professing that Christ is Lord. In reality, your flesh will not save you. You know, Romans said, in my flesh dwell is no good thing. <laughs> he didn't say whether it's a white flesh or black flesh or any flesh. He said flesh. There's no good thing. And he found that the sin is in the flesh. So you don't want to put trust in the flesh. You don't put your trust in man. You don't put your trust in God. And I, I, I want you to really listen and think about that. Amen. All right. I hope you enjoyed the set part B. Uh, we're going to go ahead and move with part C uh, after this. I uh, hope you see it. I'll try to put them out A, B, C, and D, and I'll put them on each of uh, the days of the week. But please meditate on what we're saying and ask yourself, is it worth giving my eternal soul away to steal, kill, and destroy? To hate and discriminate against somebody, knowing that it has no good outcome for eternity. And ask your pastor. And if, if, if he sit there and tells you that you are supposed to be to the steal, kill, and destroy, opposed to love one another, you need to tell him, show me the scriptures where you're coming from. Because I need to, I need to know. I don't want your opinion, because your opinion means nothing. I need to see in the scriptures where it's okay for me to hate and discriminate 
to steal, to kill, and destroy. I need you to show me that because you lead in me and yourself to eternal death. It ain't worth it. It's never been worth it. And I hope you recognize that. All right, God bless you. And, and you know, yeah, sometimes these things, is, it may be hard, but it's, it's, it's intentional to make you think and to encourage you to read the scripture for yourself. Stop depending on people. Because we had bad popes. That's historically true. So the point is, we have bad ministers. We have bad pastors. We have pastors who have, who have molested children. We have math pastors who have committed adultery. We have pastors who have stolen money from the church. So you can't sit there and say you can trust in man. Put your trust in man and then find out that he's a liar and a thief and a robber. Don't do that. And we know that man, the history of man himself, has done bad things and that you don't want to be caught on the wrong side of judgment just for a status that has give you nothing and that's the whole point you need to understand it gives you nothing especially when it causes you to do the steal kill and destroy amen so i hope you enjoy this session we'll catch you on the next one don't forget to subscribe and leave comments if you want to leave comments. You're welcome to do that so I can read them and see whether I need to change something up. But I do want you to re remember, when you say that Christ is Lord, then do what he tells you to do and conform to the image he wants you to conform to, not the image of people. That's death. You have life in Christ. Amen. All right. God bless you. And I'll see you on part C. And I hope you have a great week. And uh, we'll see you when you see you. Amen. God bless you. And I'll check you later. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>